Hello everyone, I'm Animus J, and welcome back to another Redstone video. This one is going to be a little less tutorial, though I will explain all of these things, but we're going to be going over six circuits that you absolutely need to know in order to build Redstone in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Now, these are circuits you would need to know in Java Edition as well. However, building them in Java is going to be very different. So this applies to Pocket Edition and Bedrock Editions only. Now, in building these, let me first explain, these are not full circuits necessarily, but these are circuits that will be part of your circuits. They are concepts that you need to understand in order to build larger scale redstone. So each of these things will be things that you will need when you're building bigger redstone projects. So the first one is a burnout torch that will give you eight pulses and it is quite simple you simply need a block with a redstone torch coming off of it a block above it and then a piece of redstone dust going back across both of them and so the cool thing about this is that when you update any block around this redstone torch for instance if I push this button it's going to give you exactly eight ticks so you can see right here I have eight ender pearls there's eight left in there if I put them back in there I can press this button to do the same thing or even stepping on this string will update that torch and give me again eight ender pearls so placing a block breaking a block anything that updates the area around that redstone torch is going to give you exactly eight ticks every single time. The next one is fast clocks. Now in Java edition, you would just have a constant clock if you had built this right here. It wouldn't burn out and stop like it does on Bedrock. So on a Bedrock, in order to make a non-stop one, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put two right next to each other, and then we're going to put redstone dust. Now you only actually need the redstone dust across these two, but if you're gonna make an off switch for them, you can just add one more spot of redstone dust on the top right there, put a lever and there you go no more lag you can turn it off and walk away from it turn it back on and there you go there's your clock back again now another way of making this is two observers facing into each other however you cannot turn the observers off no matter where you add a lever it will constantly tick and it will constantly take up some of the uh, lag so to speak in your world now both of these two are the same speed though the observers are a bit more compact they are like i said unable to be turned off whereas this one is a little bit bigger takes up more space but you can shut it off you can see though they do run at the exact same speed if you want one that runs just a little bit slower what you can do is take just one observer and then starting on the back end place redstone dust one on top and then one in front in that order and it will give you a slightly slower clock than what those ones will give you and next up we have the t flip flop which is a little bit buggy in the current version of Minecraft, which is 1.14.3 while I'm recording this. But the concept behind a T flip-flop is that if you want to toggle a state, now what I mean by toggle is that if I have a lamp and I put a lever on it, I toggle it on and I toggle it off. The issue is that when you do a lever, obviously you have constant power. You don't always have constant power coming in your redstone circuits. Sometimes you only have a pulse, like a button press. And so you want a way to be able to turn off your lamp or turn off, turn on your lamp permanently. Now I've just shown you one of the issues, and that is that droppers are not behaving the way that they're supposed to. Normally, you're supposed to only be able to press a button on this top dropper in order to change the state. But right now, eh, right now it's doing all sorts of craziness. So the theory, the working behind this is that when there's an item in the bottom dropper, you press the button or directly power, bud power, the top one. And what that does is either spits out the item in the top one, if there is one in there, or otherwise it powers the bottom one, which then spits it into the top one, which then turns on your comparator and powers your output lamp then again cycling the power for it spits it down into the bottom one so basically you're creating a toggle now 
as I said, it's a little bit buggy right now and not working the way it's supposed to. I've actually gotten it to work more consistently by powering the bottom one continuously. The only issue with that is it should not be possible by normal redstone standards. And as you can see, every now and then, your item will kind of flop out. So if you block it in like so, you should have a better chance of everything working appropriately. Just know that it is supposed to only be powered by the top one. So if Minecraft does get fixed and they restore the proper behavior to droppers, you may have to change your power line from the bottom one to the top one. And what I mean by that is that, remember, it has to be bud powered. So droppers, if you provide a comparator or a repeater to the front of a dropper and then power it, what it does is it directly powers that dropper. And as you can see, it powered the redstone beneath uh, the same thing with a repeater. However, when you power it like so with just redstone, it does not power that. So replace this bottom piece of redstone with a dropper, and that is the workings behind the T flip-flop that I've designed here. So for now, it seems to be that the proper design is by powering the bottom one, but keep in mind, if things get fixed, you may have to change it to power the top one instead. So if you need a more reliable T-flop in the meantime, but a little bit less conventional, you can build this one right here. Although this one takes up more space, it does work very reliably since it is only based on redstone repeaters and redstone torches. So the way to build this one, because it is a little bit complicated, you can't exactly pause the screen and build it per se, you're going to put down two blocks with one space in between them. Then you're going to take a redstone torch on the right hand block you're going to put it towards you on the left hand block you're going to put it on the left hand side pretty easy right then you're going to take four repeaters one facing away from that torch one facing away from that torch go ahead put that on four ticks another one facing away four ticks and then this one right here you're going to put facing into the block also on four ticks and then you're just going to connect it up with redstone like so and then you can take your output off of this block right here which of course means you can always just take something like that and that would work just fine and then your input block would be right here so there we go we have on and we have off Moving on, we have the RS NOR latch, which sounds really complicated, but it's actually extremely simple. Basically what it is, is you can only have one thing on or the other. So I've just turned on this redstone lamp. If I press this button again, no matter how many times I press it, it's not gonna turn it off. It's not gonna turn it more on. So the only way to get it to go off is to press this button over here, which then turns this one on. So essentially, if this one is on, this one is off. You can never have both of them on at the same time. Turning one on turns the other off. Now, you can always just ignore this section of it and make it so that you have sort of a memory circuit, basically, that once this is on, it stays on until you come and turn it off again with a hidden reset somewhere else. Building this is quite simple. As you can see, you just need a block, redstone torch off to the side with a button on it, and redstone dust on top. Then your redstone touch dust, uh, excuse me, your redstone torch is going to go into a repeater, into a block with redstone dust, a block with a button, and then your torch right here is what repowers this dust in order to reset. Next up, we have very simple and and or gates. And so all this is, is an AND gate, is a way of making sure that unless both inputs are coming in, then you won't have anything on. So this redstone lamp will only turn on when both of these sources are powered. So if I do one at a time, you can see we get nothing on the lamp. But if I do both of them, then we get our power. By breaking this, we invert that and make it to where the only way that that is turned off is when both of them. So you can see both off, it stays on. One on, the other on, and it stays illuminated. The only way to turn it off is to have both sources powered. Then by getting rid of both of these, and just connecting up our sources like so, you have what's called an OR gate. An OR gate just means that if either one of these is on, then your light will be on. 
And lastly over here is a custom timer. Custom timer is necessary for being able to turn things on or off, giving yourself a delay. And with this one, you can add as much time to it as you want. Simply place the appropriate amount of things as you want into the hopper, and that will determine the amount of time it takes for your circuit to turn on or off. In this case, I have a delay that will keep this lamp illuminated. And so you can see this lamp is staying lit and it's going to continue lit until all of my pearls transfer to here and then transfer back to there. And then I added over here a torch on it that dings when everything is done. So you'll want to gauge out in your world how long you need your delay to be and then just add the appropriate amount of objects into your hoppers. So that is it for this video guys. I hope that that helps you out and if it did please make sure to hit that like button and if you haven't already I would love to have you subscribe. If you need help understanding anything else about redstone check out the video about how comparators work. The redstone school that explains the basics of redstone and how redstone works and then as well, you can check out the video about the smart minecart loader and unloader for filling up your minecarts, transferring them, and unloading them. That's it for today, though, guys. I'm Animus J, and I'll see you next time.